So I see that the revenue of your company in the past three quarters has been about half of what it used to be. Um, can you share with us what is the reason for this? Is it because of MCO, you know, the difficulty of traveling? Okay, so uh, it's mainly due to the uh, pandemic COVID-19, due to the lockdown, due to the uh, uh, food, tri food traffic to the mall, you know, and also due to the tourist arrival. Okay, just give you an example. So uh, we are local, domestic, we do supply to tourist destination place. Okay, we also have our own uh, so-called pharmacy chain set up in tourist destination place. But during this period, or uh, until January, until today, there's zero tourists, I can say. Okay, so the shop is closed near to that area. So beside our own, clock, uh, own, uh, own uh, shop, those that we are supplying health supplement or traditional herbs is also closed. Okay, so example, when tourists come to Malaysia, China tourists come to Malaysia, they will buy Tonka Ali coffee, or they will buy Kachit Fatima tea, or they will buy some uh, Misai Kucheng tea as well. But up to date, the, the, the traffic is zero, food traffic is zero. Okay, that's for domestic market. That's why uh, pandemic has affected our domestic sales, especially on the tourist uh, destination area. Then for as for the export, so happen that we have client also selling their product through health talk, seminar, organize a gathering at hotel or this. And during lockdown, they can't do it at all. Okay, that's for especially Indonesia. Until today, they still can't do it, can't cannot back to the normal. You know, they have to go to the uh, Muarakarang, no, the very, very, very small town, small pekan you know, to do their health talk, sharing, then convince the customer to use their product and they can't travel because of the uh, uh, lockdown. Okay, so but anyway, we have seen uh, the things start to come back after the, the, the open of the MCO. Uh, so we have seen local sales start to pick up. Then we foresee that overseas sales like uh, in China and Indonesia will fully recover by second quarter. At least in fourth quarter, we see some uh, repeat order uh, start to, to come back. But besides, this is talking about the existing business, but we, we at the moment, we have secured new business, I mean, new order or new project. One of them is the Kuizhou Yi He Sing that will contribute or uh, average about 36 million ringgit Malaysia per month. Okay, then, then the second will be from the CE, uh, CME and also from this Retamix. Hong Kong. Yep. Um, and I'm wondering, since most of the channel, marketing channel has been closed, then how come you can still have half the revenue? Where does half the revenue come from? Does it come from okay. manufacturing contract? Yeah. Yeah. So Constant Pharmacy is still there. And you know, the Constant, we do have a lot of outlet in the community area or residential area. Instead, in fact, Constant Pharmacy or retail chain pharmacy is doing well during the MCO time, okay? But we do have some outlet in the tourist destination place and the shopping mall, which is not doing well, okay? So we continue to have this kind of uh, so-called income. And besides Constant Pharmacy, half of our revenue is coming from domestic uh, brand owner. Some of the brand owner that, that they are selling some immunity product like Cordycep, uh, Tiger Milk Mushroom, and uh, Vitamin C, they are, doing, they are doing pretty well, you know? during this pandemic, you know, and you can see their orders still coming in, you know, uh, uh, because they promote through the online method, the e-commerce methods. They are already in e-commerce. They promote to FB, IG, they do uh, so-called uh, uh, Astro Go sales, all this. So they are at the right channel, you know, or, or right, they have implemented the right strategy. So our sales is coming from these two areas. I see. So, um, yeah, I don't want to like keep bombard. Uh, Randy, if you have any good question, you can jump in. I see that there are some impairment loss in the recent quarter. Can you share a little bit? Um, you know, you want to ask uh, your CFO to share a little bit about how this uh, how this impairment loss come about? Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I think the question will be that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. I think maybe. Uh... William, sorry, just to jump in on Ming Tech, um, because we do have a lot of questions on this. Um, on top of the impairment loss, I think the the more, I would say, uh, 
um, whole, wholesome question is actually with regards to your accounts receivable um, in general, right? Um, so on top of the um, impairment loss, which Ming Tech mentioned, there is also a pattern that we can see where in Q4, normally there is a, there's always a spike in your accounts receivable, um, which makes BioAlpha's accounts receivable on an, an upward trend, you know, at every financial year close. Um, so I guess the question is number one, as Ming Tech asked, um, what happened on the impairments? Number two, is this trend of um, increment in accounts receivable going to continue this year? Um, number three is, um, are we going to expect more impairments going forward? And what are the steps that the company is doing to mitigate such impairments um, to churn working capital? And to okay, churn working capital. You. Okay, so... Uh... We are subjected to seasonal trends. Why seasonal trend? In fourth quarter, you can see for the past 10 years, except uh, 2018, uh, when the sales tax GST implemented, where there is a uh, or, or some uh, major order coming in third quarter. So except that year, for the past 10 years, our third and fourth quarter turnover is much more higher because uh, most of the festive season happen in year end. Uh, and the other reason is people start receiving bonus in December year end. So their purchasing power will be much more higher when come to the year end and beginning of the year. So the brand owner, in order to tackle for this festive season and the huge demand near to the year end or January, they have to put in their order in third quarter. So that the third quarter in third quarter and or third quarter, the stock will arrive at their premise and they will start to do promotions and product launching or this so we are in so-called the retail uh, uh product that subjected to seasonal trends okay this is applied on the other player as well so that's why it caused the fourth quarter turnover to jump out and at the same time the receivable amount will jump out as well because we do give credit to our long-term uh, partner especially those in overseas because uh, the so-called so stock turnaround, uh, cash turnaround period is quite long for, especially for overseas customers. It it takes us almost one month to reach their warehouse, let's say in Indonesia, from Malaysia to Indonesia. Then they have to send to all their outlets. By the time the outlet turn the stock into the cash, is maybe take another two months. So the the for the cash turnaround period for our customer easily is more than three months. So sometimes we give the credit period up to six months for those who have relationship with us for more than 10 years. Okay, so this kind of trend, uh, we are glad to say that it's not going to continue because after this pandemic, a lot of things has changed. Okay? So our customer has changed their, uh, the, 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 the method that they distribute the product. Okay, example, they are now all on e-commerce. Okay, so they try to go for digitalization to reduce the timing required to convert the stock into cash. So uh, the new normal has helped us or help our customer to reduce their credit terms required. Then at the same time, our new customer that we have secured, like Guangzhou uh, Yihexing, so the credit term maximum is up to 30 days. In fact, we have a joint working committee <coughs> set up with Yihexing. Once they collect the the uh, co collection is coming in from the government government promised to pay them within one week after delivery so once they receive the payment and it's supposed to be credited to our uh, so-called hainan bank account within three days okay so with this kind of arrangement with our new customer we foresee that the receivable pattern will change it will be improved further so this you can see in second quarter okay then your third question is about the impayment yes there are some impayment because i just highlighted that some of our customer is dealing with uh, tourists they have their outlet open in tourist destination place not only in malaysia but also in indonesia and china for example like one of the customer in china they have their outlet at hainan island the sangya area so they have been closed for the last uh, six months first two quarter but they reopened back after july you know so some of the customers are not able to pay to us on time. So we have to do an impayment or provide some provisions. And also there are some impayments, some minor impayment on the stock that we are holding in overseas, in China and also in Indonesia. 
So we have to provide it because uh, in view of the expiry date is too short. You know, we have wasted one year. So we are we have to, to be prudent enough to give some provision for the stock in overseas and so to do some provision for the debtor that have exceeded the credit terms. I hope this explained clearly to you guys.